Today we've got a nice integral involving something called the fractional part function. So it's in some ways dual to the floor function. And by that I mean if you have any real number x, you can write it as the floor of x plus the fractional part of x. So for example, the fractional part of 7.5 is equal to one half because we've extracted the whole part of this number. Or if you take the fractional part of 123.99, you'll just get 0.99. Again, because we've extracted the fractional part. Okay, so what do we wanna calculate here today? Well, we'll calculate the integral from one to infinity of the fractional part of x over x cubed. Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing that I'll do is I'll take this improper integral and write it as the limit of an integral. So let's write this as the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the integral from one to N plus one of the fractional part of X over X cubed DX. And this limit can be indexed either by real numbers or by natural numbers. So let's just make sure and recognize that here we are indexing this limit by natural numbers. But we achieve the same result. Okay, nice. But from here, I'll take this integral from one to n plus one and break it up into n integrals. There'll be one from the interval one to two, and then one from two to three, and then one from three to four, all the way up till the last one will be from n to n plus one. And then I'll add them all together. So in other words, I'll write this as the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum of little n going from one up to capital N of the integral from little n up to little n plus one of our function. So in this case, this is the fractional part of x over x cubed dx. But now let's do a little bit of analysis of what's going on here. So here we'll note that x is on the interval from n to n plus one, but that means that the floor of x is equal to n. Okay, but that means that x itself is equal to n plus the fractional part of x, using our observation over here based off of the definition of the fractional part function. But now bringing that down, we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. We'll have our sum as little n goes from one to capital N, and then the integral from n to n plus one. We have our fractional part of x in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we have n plus the fractional part of x cubed dx. And now we'll make a substitution that'll make this whole thing simpler. And in fact, it'll get rid of this fractional part function. And that substitution will be to set t equal to the fractional part of x. But that will mean that the interval from n to n plus one will transform to the interval from zero to one. Of course, something weird is happening at the end point, but since that's only happening at the upper end point and not everywhere in between, we're okay here. Okay, and then notice that the dt element will be dx, and that's because, based off the fact that we're between two integers here, this fractional part function is differentiable. Okay, so let's see what this is going to look like now. We'll have the limit as n goes to infinity, bringing this down, the sum as n goes from one to capital N, and then the integral from zero to one of, now it'll look like t over t plus n quantity cubed dt. So now how can we take this antiderivative? It's a bit tricky because we have t's in the numerator and the denominator, but we can easily get there by adding a nice copy of zero to the numerator. So let's move this t over and then we will add in and then subtract in. So like I said, that's just like adding zero. And then we'll be left with the limit as capital N goes to infinity. We'll have the sum as little n goes from one to capital N. And then I'll break this into two pieces. 
So the first piece will be given by what's going on in these magenta parentheses. So that'll cancel this t plus n cubed down to a t plus n squared. So we've got the integral from zero to one of one over t plus n quantity squared dt. And then from that, we are subtracting n times the integral from zero to one of one over t plus n quantity cubed dt. Great, and all of that is within our sum. Okay, so now let's do some fairly straightforward antiderivatives and see what we get. So we'll have the limit as capital N goes to infinity, the sum as little n goes from one to capital N, and then this inner antiderivative, so we increase the exponent by one and divide by the new exponent, so that'll be minus one over t plus n to the minus one, but that'll be a minus one in the denominator. We evaluate that from zero to one. But I'm gonna do one of my favorite tricks to do, which is change this minus to a plus and then reverse the order of evaluation. So we're going from one to zero instead of, instead of zero to one. And then here, this is like a negative three exponent. We'll up that to negative two and divide by the new exponent. That'll cancel this minus out front to a plus and we'll get plus n over two times one over t plus n quantity squared evaluated from zero to one. And now let's bring that up to the top and finish it off. So bringing this down, we have the limit as n goes to infinity and then our sum from one to n, then evaluating this at zero will give us one over n minus one over n plus one. That's what we get if we evaluate that at one and then we'll have plus n over two times evaluating that at one will give us one over n plus one quantity squared minus n over two. What we get evaluating that at zero will be one over n squared. So something like that. But now we're gonna get a bit of simplification. So notice that this n will cancel this down to an n to the first power. And then after that, we can take this one over two n and this one over n and rewrite them as one over two n. So that's what we have right there. Okay, and then we need to simplify what's going on with this term as well. And we'll do something similar to what we did on the last board. So let's rewrite this as n plus one minus one over two times one over n plus one quantity squared. And then we'll see that this n plus one and this n plus one squared in the denominator will cancel that down so it's similar to this, meaning we can put these together and cancel out of what's going on over there. Okay, so now bringing that down, we'll have the limit as capital N goes to infinity. And then I'm gonna bring a half out. We'll have the sum as N goes from one to capital N of one over N. And then minus the sum as N goes from one to capital N of one over N plus one. So that's from this term and then minus the sum as n goes from one to capital N of one over n plus one quantity squared. But now this is almost a well-known sum. That's almost the sum of all of the reciprocals of the natural numbers. It's just we're missing one over one. So let's include one over one in there by starting this at zero, but that means we've just subtracted one from the whole equation, so we need to add one back like this. Okay. And then you'll see that these two terms almost cancel each other out. In fact, with a little bit of re-indexing, we can make them cancel each other out. So let's take the first term out of this and then we'll re-index to have the sum as n goes from one to little n minus one of one over n plus one. And that'll set us up to combine it with this term right here, but we just have to take the top term out. So minus the sum as n goes from one to capital N minus one of one over N plus one, and then minus one over capital N plus one. So now this and this, and now let's double up this one and this one. 
and then also pass the limit through to this sum which we know converges. And that'll leave us with 1 half times 1 plus 1, which is 1 half times 2, which is 1, and then minus 1 half, and then we'll have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 squared. But like I said, now we've arrived at a well-known sum. This sum has the value of pi squared over 6. So since we're taking half of it, we have pi squared over 12, which gives us a final answer of 1 minus pi squared over 12. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.